Neo, N-E-A-L, Hurwitz, New York, New York, Medellin, Colombia, and Israel. Okay, uh... Do you know any New Yorkers who have left and where are they going? Say that again? Do you know New York, any New Yorkers who have left and where are they going? Yeah, actually, the folks I know who've left have gone, I guess, Hamptons, Woodstock, Florida, Utah, um... A couple, I guess, in Europe, yeah. Um, if you were not in New York, where would you be? If I was not in New York, where would I be? Yeah. I'd be um, right now getting towards spring, Maine, Vermont, yeah. New Hampshire, and I'd be in Israel, Colombia, and maybe take my trip around the world that I want to do. If you could redo any part of your life, what would it be? I guess I would have finished my PhD at Columbia, and um, I don't know, I would have figured out my first two marriages better. What are some good places to film videos like this in New York? Well, you're in one. Uh, I'm up at Columbia University. The campus is great. That's a great place to be. Uh, top of the Empire State Building would be a lot of fun. United Nations would be good. And Central Park anywhere. You come to this park often? Yeah, a lot, yeah. What is I've, the I've lived in Manhattan for 70... I mean, I've lived in New York City for 76 years. What is the strangest thing you've seen or heard right here in this park? Probably somebody sick from uh, drugs, lying down, being uh, uh, getting medical help. Do you have any special talents? I have a lot of special talents. Can you name a few? I'm a professional fundraiser, Montak Chia, Thai uh, massage. I'm a professional fundraiser, uh, professional masseur. I don't know if I said that. Professional masseur. Um, I run a softball team in New York for 45 years, manager, player, coach, owner. What is your biggest accomplishment in life? Right now, my biggest accomplishment in life is, I guess, staying alive. That's number one, given COVID. Number two, I would say uh, my children and my relationships, uh, especially now my beautiful fiance from Medellin. How do you know you could trust the business? What kind of signs are you looking for? How do I know if I could trust what? A business. How do I know if I could trust a business? Yeah. Well, I have a lot of experience with that. Um, it depends on what kind of relationship you have with the business. I mean, if you walk into a restaurant, that's a different experience than if you're making a contract. But uh, you have to learn, you know, what to trust, what not to trust. And I've actually had my own experiences with people who have taken advantage. So, you know, there's nothing perfect about it. You just have to really be aware. And I also have a good lawyer. What were you saying? I have a good lawyer. Okay. What, what's, the, what's the key to finding a good lawyer? Then? Good lawyer, I think the uh, best way to get a good lawyer is probably on reputation and on uh, talking to somebody who's very smart and asking them who's a good lawyer. Word of mouth, you mean? I guess word of mouth is probably best for yeah. most things, yeah. I actually had a good dentist recently off uh, the internet, Yeah. but I went back to the dentist I had that was our family dentist. Or what have been some game changers in your life? Anything that happened to you to make you want to change the way you live your life? I guess the biggest thing is what's happened in the last uh, year and a half, and that is my health has had some problems. Before that, I guess uh, not finishing my doctorate at Columbia, where I was the youngest member of the faculty there. Uh, I guess that was a game changer. I went to California, played volleyball on the beach, Huntington Beach, with the Olympic guys, became a massage therapist. Then accidentally fell into professional fundraising. How has your life changed since COVID? Well, unfortunately, for about a year now, exactly, I have not been outside of uh, the Northeast uh, United States of America when I usually travel every three months. What kind of places you've traveled to in the past? I've been pretty much uh, all over Europe. I've been to Russia, I've been to the Middle East, and I uh, have not been to Asia, not been to Antarctica, not been to Greenland, Arctic, 
you know, Canada, United States, Mexico, or the, the, the Caribbean, Jamaica, St. Croix, Turks and Caicos. We've had a fabulous time in Colombia uh, the last seven years. We usually go down there for months of the winter. And I haven't been back to Israel for a while. I really want to get back to Israel, big time. You got any advice for people who want to travel? Yeah, wow. I mean, I've traveled all over, so uh, anybody who wanted to travel, uh, I could give them some tips. You know, I mean, don't sweat this and don't sweat that. And, you know, make your plans carefully and enjoy yourself. I mean, travel's for fun. What were you doing during the lockdown in March and April? I was locked down in my house, more or less, in my neighborhood. Luckily, we live on Morningside Heights, so Morningside Heights, Manhattan Valley, Upper West Side, Columbus Avenue, Amsterdam, Broadway up there. Uh, everything north of 59th Street has been very alive and a lot of restaurants, and now we may go to a movie tonight. Do you have any advice for young people? Yeah, stay alive. Don't get yourself killed. That was one of the things I told myself when I was young because I was in the civil rights movement and I was around a lot of drugs and, you know, <clears throat> I had a motorcycle and I liked cars. So one thing I said to myself was I don't want to ever die from an accident that's unnecessary and I also don't want to uh, get arrested. So don't get arrested, don't get killed and enjoy every minute of your, uh, of your existence. Now, it's sometimes, fun. sometimes like people, her. sometimes people have compared uh, the current political climate to the '60s. That a lot of things that haven't happened since then. How do you think the two compare? Well, I was in my 20s in the '60s, so uh, now I'm in my 70s. Um, Well, you know, we had a war uh, called Vietnam where 55,000 American boys died over there, not to mention the hundreds of thousands, millions perhaps, of Vietnamese people. So I wouldn't compare anything going on now with that, although Iraq and uh, Afghanistan and the places where our young men are still dying is uh, very, very sad. There's a very big uh, bunch of differences. Islamic uh, fascism now, uh, back then we didn't have, I don't think, Islamic fascism. We had, back then, Nazism, uh, you know, the KKK and uh, racists and things of that sort. We had the civil rights movement big time back then. Now it's Black Lives Matter. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you could say a period of change, unrest, uh, is going on now and then uh, we'll see what happens because the 60s really just collapsed around 1968-69 and we wound up going into a very uh, calm period it seems after that what do you think do you think men or women have it easier in life? it's a mix it really is i mean women win in divorce uh, <laughs> women win in life uh, span uh, women win maybe maybe because they can have a relationship to a child that a man can have, like giving birth to a child. But uh, overall, you know, I would say it balances out. Although in history, men have dominated women, taken advantage of women, subjugated women, repressed women, and have repressed sexuality, period. And that's uh, maybe going to change, maybe going to change. Okay, are you on social media at all? I'm on all of social media. You're on it? Okay, you want to plug any of your social media? Say it again? You want to plug any of your social media? Yeah, put it on Facebook on my account. Yeah. So you're on Facebook? Yeah. 